Welcome everyone. My name is Kaliroy Stavrianu, and on behalf of Global Clinical Engineering Alliance, I'm very happy to moderate this series of webinars that aim to educate, promote collaboration, and also promote information exchange about healthcare technology, engineering, and patient outcomes. All our webinars are recorded, archived, and also live streamed on Facebook. Following the completion of the webinar, the recording material will be accessible on our website, www.globalcea.org. Please note that at the bottom of the screen, you have a Q&A button where you can submit questions to the faculty. And those questions will be addressed towards the end of the webinar or through a report in our website. In addition, for posting general comments, there is the option of the chat box for audience interaction. Today's webinar is the seventh in the series with the title, Multinational Clinical Engineering Collaboration Model. Now, I'm very pleased to give the floor to Yadin David, GCA's Interim President. Dr. Yadin, the floor is yours. Kali Roy, thank you very much. I'm so happy once again to be with you on that uh, interesting presentation that we have for all of you today. This webinar, is going to be addressing something that we neglect to put enough focus on it. But as you go through the COVID-19 era, uh, there are a lot of people claiming to be the silent heroes. Clinical engineering is one of the community members that believe to be a silent hero. I myself definitely agree with that. And on behalf of the Global Clinical Engineering Alliance, I want you to think, are we recognizing those heroes sufficiently? Are we giving enough credit for all the work that is done day in, day out? Evening, nights, weekends, holidays, caring for patients, making sure that the technology is patient ready and is available as needed and no diagnostic test is being postponed, rescheduled, and no patient is suffering injury. Everything is safe and in the right order, full compliance. So with all clinical engineers around the world, it is important to understand how do you recognize a good model? What is an excellence in our field? So think about it for a moment. Have you ever thought about what in my friends, in my world, is an example that should be taught in schools, in universities, and something that maybe you would like to follow? Today webinar about the multinational clinical engineering collaboration model is giving you ideas about what it is, what is this model, and how we recognize that. And I would like to ask Kali Roy if we can have a few polling questions for you, perhaps four of them, that I would like for you to take a few seconds and respond, and then we will share with you the answers. Question one, mostly about your background to better understand those who will answer the questions, where are they coming from? Are you practicing the clinical engineering field? Is your practice in the management of, or administration? Are you part of those who make the devices, part of industry? Are you teaching in the academia? Or perhaps you are not an engineer and you're part of other healthcare providers or professionals such as physician, nurses, respiratory therapist or clinical laboratory technologist? Please pick an answer. Question two, this uh, webinar is focusing on what the clinical engineering community in Japan did for educating and improving the clinical engineering services in Myanmar. Have you ever visited Japan or Myanmar? You visited both of them, you visited only one, and you never visited that part of the world. 
well, maybe we can make arrangement to you, uh, to your visit by talking to this moderator of this uh, session, Keiko Fukuta from Japan. And then question three and four, Kaliroy. They will be addressed at the end of the webinar. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Absolutely right. Thank you. So if we can take five more seconds, I would like to show you the results myself. Interesting to know who is on the line today. And four, three, two, one. Here's the results. Interesting. 80% are clinical engineers. 20% are academia. Excellent. And have you visited? I visited Japan. Almost half of you, 40% said they visited Japan. And 20% visited both. I didn't realize that. That's actually, that's a good number. And um, did you, um, uh, you never visited those countries? Well, there's a large group of you out there that should put that on their bucket list, on the list of things to do before we pass to a better world. And with that, I would like to give the floor to our moderator, Keiko Fukuta, the Associate Professor, Medical Center for Translational and Clinical Research Department of the Medical Innovation in Osaka University Hospital, and as well as member of the Founder Council of the Global Clinical Engineering Alliance, GCEA. Keiko, the floor is yours. Good morning, afternoon, and evening all. I am Keiko Fukuta. I am a member of the GCEA Award Committee. Today, I have the pleasure of hosting this webinar, Multinational Clinical Engineering Collaboration Model, because the GCEA Collaborative Capacity Building Award was established last year, and this is the first chance to share the achievement and ongoing work of first winners. Before the session, let me explain what is the GCEA Collaborative Capacity Building Award. This award recognizes groups or society for their contribution toward collaboration with other countries to improve their knowledge, education, capacity, and the status in the clinical engineering field. The effort of the nominated groups or societies that have gained global recognition in the clinical engineering field, healthcare system, and the communities through a demonstrated combination of the three categories professional capacity building, collaboration, and contribution. The application period was from July to August 2021. Several groups were nominated and we finally evaluated them based on criteria. Based on this comprehensive evaluation, we were very honored to announce the first GCEA Collaborative Capacity Building Award. The winner was Japan Association for Clinical Engineers, which has been contributing to the development for the capacity building of the clinical engineering field between Myanmar and Japan. So we gave them the plaque of the award. Now, let's move on the session. Today's session is 15 minutes. 
this is a good opportunity to hear the winner's activity from both Japan, who started this project, and Myanmar, who received it. The first presenter is Mr. Tomotaka Naramura from Japan Association for Clinical Engineers. The second speaker is Mr. Toshikazu Harada from Japan Association for Clinical Engineers as well. And the last speaker is Ms. Pupu Sin from North Okalapa General Hospital, Yangon, Myanmar. This is a global webinar and we hold it at 7 p.m. UTC. Due to each country's time differences, this means that it is four o'clock in the morning in Japan and at 1.30 a.m. in Myanmar. So this session presented from Japan and Myanmar could not attend live. And we can broadcast what we have recorded in advance. So, when you write any comments and questions in the chat box, we cannot reply immediately, but we will share it with them later on. Okay, let's start the first presenter, Mr. Naramura. He's a clinical engineer in Japan as well as an associate professor at the Department of Life Science, Kurashiki University of Science and the Earth. He's also a visiting professor, Morinomiya University of Medical Science and International University, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Moreover, he is a council member Japan Association for Clinical Engineers and Japan Society for Technology of Blood Purification. He is also a director, Clinical Engineering Global Promotion Foundation and a chief editor, Academia Journal, Blood Purification, Clinical Engineering and Academic Journal, Journal of Clinical Medicine, Clinical Engineering. He is a project manager of this project, the Project for Human Resource Development of Medical Engineering of Myanmar. So he will explain the outline of the project. But before this, in the first half, he will introduce Japanese clinical engineers because we need to understand Japanese clinical engineers' unique rule and standard. Feel free to start the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning or good evening. First of all, I'm very honored to receive GCA Collaborative Capacity Building Award, and I'd like to thank you for giving me the chance to speak here today. My name is Naramura, and I'm responsible for Myanmar Project. I've been asked to speak on behalf of Japan Association for Clinical Engineers. My talk is divided into two parts. I'll start with talking about the role of clinical engineers in Japan. Then I'd like to talk about the overview of project for human resource development of medical engineering in Myanmar. At first, I will talk about the clinical engineer in Japan. I would like to briefly explain the work of a clinical engineer in Japan. 
clinical engineer in Japan has established its position as a national qualification and is actively involved in medical practices such as operation of life support system and the direction of a doctor, as well as maintenance of medical equipment. About 2,000 clinical engineers are registered each year, and there are about 50,000 people now. However, there is still a shortage of clinical engineers nationwide, and uh, expected, uh, expectations for clinical engineers from the medical industry are very high. Since clinical engineer is a relatively new occupation, it is characterized by a younger age structure. Most clinical engineers are engaged in blood purification work. This slide shows a life support system in operation. The left slide shows the use of a PCPS, IABP, mechanical ventilator, and infusion pump for a patient with severe heart failure after PCI. And the next, uh, it shows hemodialysis machine in operation. In addition, the right slide shows the main advanced medical devices, such as artificial cardiopulmonary device, or toroless blood collection device, and G fibrillator uh, in operation in cardiac surgery. With the sophistication and diversification of medical devices, the number of troubles related to medical devices has increased, and the need for occupations that specialized in these devices has increased. We clinical engineers are mainly engaged in the maintenance and operation of advanced medical equipment centering on life support systems. This slide shows the work of a clinical engineer at the hemodialysis center where I used to work. Water quality inspection before the start of hemodialysis treatment from puncture to blood return, maintenance of the equipment after the treatment, etc., are all the jobs of the clinical engineers. Treatment from puncture to blood return will be done in cooperation with the nurse. The doctor will give specific instructions, such as hemodialysis conditions. This is a scene from a class at the university where I am currently working, but in order to take the uh, national examination for clinical engineers, obliged to give lectures and practical training at the designated school for three to four years. Students learn both knowledge and skills at school. Students who have graduated from school are eligible to take the national examination for clinical engineers. And if they pass the national examination, they can work as a clinical engineer at the hospital. Now, uh, let's move on to the overview of a project for human resource development of medical engineering in Myanmar. In recent years, the economic growth of developing and emerging countries has been remarkable, and it seems that the level of medical care has been improving year by year. With the advancement of medical care and globalization, demand for various medical equipment are rapidly increasing in these countries. 
In developing countries, a large amount of medical equipment is provided in the form of grant aid through official development assistance and uh, uh, medical equipment has become indispensable and uh, integral part of modern, me uh, modern medicine for providing medical care. However, uh, there are currently no human resources who can properly manage medical equipment that are uh, becoming more uh, sophisticated year by year and they are being disposed of uh, with uh, uh, minor failures. In addition, since medical equipment are not managed and used in uh, appropriate states troubles that occur during treatment are end, uh, endless, uh, are endless. In Japan, clinical engineers who have both medical and engineering knowledge and skills are in charge of improving the quality of medical care and ensuring safety as medical equipment specialists and member of a team of medical care. On the other hand, in these countries, the current situation is that the development of specialists who appropriately operate and maintenance medical equipment has not kept up. Japan Association for Clinical Engineers are currently supporting Myanmar in developing medical equipment specialists. So, uh, Japan Association for Clinical Engineers are strengthening the medical engineer training system that handles medical equipment and providing the education and the training necessary to contribute to the improvement of the maintenance and management system for medical equipment in public hospitals. In particular, upon completion of the course we have developed, students will be able to acquire medical engineering knowledge and techniques and solve various problems of medical equipment understand the characteristics and the structure of medical equipment and conduct as an efficient medical engineer from basic to high level medical equipment. Play an active part as a leader in the clinical engineer, uh, clinical engineering field for local community. Understanding the role of medical engineer as a member of the medical care team and give safe medical services while coordinating with other health, uh, health professionals. First of all, Japan Association for Clinical Engineers has newly established a medical engineer diploma course with a capacity of 18 students per grade at the University of Medical Technology Yangon, one of the national uh, universities for training medical staff in Myanmar. The Myanmar government has selected the enrollment among these who already have medical qualifications, such as nurse, medical technician, and radiological technologist, or uh, those who are from the university uh, engineering department and wish to enroll. The goal of this project is to train about 19 medical engineers in five years. The graduate will be assigned to major hospitals in Myanmar and uh, engaged in medical equipment management work. The curriculum policy is as shown in this slide. That is to acquire practical knowledge and techniques necessary for maintenance and management of the medical equipment through the specialized lectures, practice, 
training of clinical engineering in the basic subjects and the specialized subjects. To expand uh, training to bring up a talented medical engineer who can deal with uh, maintenance and management of various medical equipment e uh, effectively. To understand the patient's adaptation on the medical equipment and acquire knowledge of related medical subjects. To acquire knowledge of, uh, sorry, uh, to acquire knowledge of facilities and the surrounding environment of medical equipment by learning safety management. Based on the Japanese clinical engineer education curriculums, Japan Association for Clinical Engineers have extracted the educational content necessary for managing medical equipment at hospital in Myanmar and have developed and is providing our own one-year curriculum. Students will uh, study 25 subjects 14, uh, 1400 hours in a year. The text is also original and made in English and Burmese. About 40 Japanese clinical engineers take turns traveling and staying in Myanmar to give lecture directly. In addition, not only classroom lecture, but also often on campus practice and hospital practice. Five students with excellent grade are selected from these who have complete, uh, completed this curriculum and uh, uh, sent to study abroad at the master's program of University for Clinical Engineer Training in Japan. International students return to Myanmar after completing the master's program and will be active as uh, faculty members at the University of Medical Technology Yangon. Through this project, a new certification medical technician was created to establish the status of graduates. In addition, after the end of the five-year project, a four-year bachelor course will be set up and the Myanmar government is coordinating so that those who graduate from this faculty can be graduate, uh, granted clinical engineer qualification. Since the coronavirus in, uh, infection spread on the way, this project was carried out by web lecture with the cooperation of local staff. This slide shows a web lecture. So uh, at this point, my presentation will be the end. We are confident that the graduates of this project will bring a bright future to Myanmar in the future. The Japan Association for Clinical Engineers will continue to actively uh, carry out activities to expand the opportunity for clinical engineers to play an active role. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Naramula. This was very clear explanation what you have been doing and you are showing great leadership within this project. If anybody has any comment and question, please write in the chat box and we will share it with him later. The second speaker is Mr. Harada. He is a clinical engineer and laboratory technician in Japan and has been 13 years experience working at the Kumamoto University Hospital. At the moment, 
he belonged to Kumamoto Comprehensive Medical Rehabilitation Academy. Moreover, he was an executive director of Japan Association for Clinical Engineers from 2012 to 2018. And he has been the executive director in the Japan Society Blood Purification in Criteria Chair since 2011. He will talk about the actual of lectures, practical training, and postgraduate education in the project. Feel free to start the presentation. Thank you for introducing the moderator, Ms. Keiko Fukuda. Hello, everyone around the world. I'm Toshikazu Harada from JIS. Uh, please call me Tos. Earlier, Professor Naramura gave an overview of this project. I would like to talk about the actual situation in the field of education. Introduction. I first joined this project in November 2018. My previous job was as a clinical engineer and laboratory technician at a National University Hospital for about 40 years. I have been working on the project for human resource development of medical engineering in Myanmar of this from June 2019. I entered Myanmar and also experienced teaching student lectures on campus training and hospital training. I have been there for two weeks as the shortest and five weeks as the longest and I have traveled there nine times. Uh, presentation contents. First, I will explain the, the on-campus lectures. Second, I will explain the on-campus training. Third, I will explain hospital training. Finally, I will explain postgraduate education. The on-campus lectures consist, consist of two major classroom lecture components. One is a lecture on applied mathematics and basic medicine shown on slides by UMTY professors. The other is a series of lectures on the topics uh, that Japanese clinical engineer I should master learning from electrical and electronic engineering to mechanical engineering, uh, medical engineering, and so on. Uh, these are specialized subjects. Uh, these lectures were given by Japanese CEs and physicians. Lecture by Japanese CE. A total of 30 Japanese CEs and physicians traveled to Japan to give lectures on specialized subjects. All are experts in their respective subjects. The slides show a basic lecture on ventilator and a lecture using a ventilator. The <laughs> Uh, there are two forms of on-campus training. One is practice training by Japanese CE. Uh, the, uh, the other is lectures and practical training on examination and treatment equipment with the uh, cooperation of agencies and uh, companies in Yango using actual equipment. Uh, the slides show 
the practical training in electrical and electronic engineering. The practical ex exercise used a circuit metal uh, making kit. Also shown on the slide is a simple leakage current measuring uh, device made from electronic components and a plastic box. Half of the students in this uh, sec in the second batch had a nursing background and had difficulty with soldering operations. With the cooperation of companies in Yangon, lectures of practical training were conducted using actual equipment. Uh, the lectures include medical gas, dialysis equipment, laboratory equipment, and scopic equipment, ultrasound equipment, and other equipment related to examination and treatment. The slide shows the dialysis machine. The students learn about the structure and role of each part. Provide an overview and object of hospital practice. Overview. Four, hospital training. Students are divided into two groups and visit a dis designated hospital, two facilities. One Japanese supervisor will be assigned to each facility. The training period will last 12 days and will be loaded. A student write a daily report at the end of each day to record their activities. At the end of rotation, a student must present a summary of their training. Of course, to enter a hospital and learn the role of each department, uh, to learn about medical equipment and how to manage it, to collect information on medical equipment and prepare equipment management registers. The team makes the rounds of the world and other departments with a tablet device. As the individual device information entered on the table is then entered into the PC by a senior technician in the central control department. Uh, this work is necessary for the future creation of medical equipment management registers at the place of deployment. The purpose of hospital training is to see medical equipment used in the hospital and learn how it's used and what uh, precautions should be taken in its use. It's also important to know the role of the medical equipment, use and examples of problems that have occurred. If there is a malfunction functioning device, we will determine if it repairs by our own technical skills. If the very failed parts are not available. We may take parts from the same type of failed device and replace them. They learn uh, this from senior engineer. Uh, here is an example of one of the repairs. This is a failure of an electro suction machine. When we open the inside, the negative pressure pump stopped working because it was filled with blood and secretions. So, uh, the senior engineer explained the structure of the pump, disassembled, cleaned, and uh, disassembled it. 
and the pair eight. Uh, here, it occurred to me that the basic ideas of repair is disassembly, cleaning and assembly, and the ideas of combining the two things mentioned earlier into one is important. What are some things to keep in mind when making repairs? It's an infection control measures. What is the cause of the malfunction? And a seat table used by staff. So, what are the necessary countermeasures? A staff must know how to use equipment accurately. I think the role of MEs is to educate people on the proper use of equipment. We felt the regular monitoring was necessary for ME as a new profession to operate in the country of Myanmar. The monitoring was to be conducted over short, medium, and long periods of time. We would visit the facilities of the graduates and survey their activities, as shown in the lower section, and plan to provide new guidance. The graduates will repair malfunctioning equipment while maintaining a medical equipment control ledger in the hospital. Uh, they must also obtain handling ma manuals and uh, prepare various inspection sheets, as equipment is often stored in wards and various de departments. We want we wanted them to hold training a session on the current operation of medical equipment based on the handling manuals. Orientation was given to the graduates on how to carry out this monitoring. A short survey uh, was conducted as, at this time two months after the graduates had been placed. It was at this time what we discovered difference in the environment of activities in different facilities and identified areas for improvement. Finally, in Myanmar, there is a ceremony to thank uh, those who had have taken care of them on a daily basis. I was very moved by this ceremony of graduate and decided to follow up with them in the future. A short-term surveys reveal differences between facilities. Uh, therefore, we visit the placement of the graduates to ask uh, them to follow up on their activities uh, and improve the environment, including uh, the workrooms for ME activities. We visited their workrooms and checked their activities. We also discussed with the hospital senior manager the introduction of the new ME's job, a description and requests for support for their activities. Uh, thanks to the monitoring activities, we were informed that the environment in the premise has subsequently improved. A training session on medical equipment for hospital staff were organized, as shown in the 
picture, we learn the awareness raising on the safe use of medical equipment is progressing. I'm happy that a workshop was organized on the safe use of medical equipment, which is another role of ME. In addition to managing medical equipment as an activity of ME, I also received information that some of the graduates are continuing their activities of MEs with a sense of responsibility. I was very happy that they are working with a sense of pride in their role as MEs. Conclusion. I introduced the practicalities of teaching DME course, courses. Some of the students wanted to repair faulty medical equipment, some entered in the school. Three, uh, they have a sense of mission and they are involved in on-campus lectures, a practical training and hospital practice. Uh, they were very enthusiastic in their studies. Uh, the ME industry has become established in Myanmar as a new type of job and contribute as much as possible to healthcare in Myanmar. We would like to continue to follow up on this. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Harada. I think that your activity were very affordable and supportable because it goes from essential basic information to high quality job training and hand on job. If anybody has any comment and question, please write it on the chat box and we will share it with him later. Last speaker is Ms. Pupu Singh, medical engineer in North Okalapa General Hospital, Yangon, Myanmar. She was the second generation in this project as a student. Based on this project, she will tell us how she and her team are currently managing medical devices as a medical engineer in their hospital. Feel free to start when you are ready. Hello, good morning and good evening, Respected Lisa and everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Pipu Ten, medical engineer at North Club General Hospital, Yangon, Myanmar. Today, I would like to present about the role of medical engineer in Myanmar. Firstly, uh, I will present the major role and responsibility of medical engineer. And secondly, I am going to present uh, the explanation of the role of medical engineer. And finally, I will summarize my presentation. It takes about 15 minutes. I would like to turn on the next slide. The major role and responsibility of medical engineer in our country, Myanmar. Medical equipment inventory, installation and operation, safety, maintenance and repairing, management and procurement, knowledge sharing. Uh, they are step by step in and a related process for major role and responsibility of medical engineer. Next slide, please. Number one, medical equipment inventory. We collect data at the hospital department and creation or computerized database and parcel system. And then update the data and sharing to respected department and other hospitals. They all are medical equipment inventory. Next slide, please. This, this slide about installation and operation. 
for your supervisor and store for all type of medical and non medical equipment for example modular od installation for necessary equipment such as pendant oxygen line and ceiling lamp and then we also embark an installation and operation on new medical equipment for emergency use such as ventilator patient monitor and oxygen concentrator for covid 19 patient and covid 19 pandemic period and next slide please and this picture show uh, medical superintendent and some of the operation director and company manager and we medical engineer all together manage and manage and provide installation of ceiling lamp and pendant for new room and audio complex and next slide and this picture show installation of ventilator for COVID ICU, the first floor of the audio complex. And next slide. And then this photo show installation, testing, and training of portable X ray uses and installation wire for COVID 19 patient, front floor of audio complex. I would like to turn on to next slide, please. This photo show installation of new auto -clays. The two auto -clays are now functioning and need to replace the other. So we urgently install the new one. Next slide. The next slide is safety. We provide continuous monitoring for star and user as an important issue. And then plan for maintenance program to prevent potential risk and failure. And then sharing pamphlet and instruction paper for users of medical and non medical equipment. Next slide, please. For safety, uh, we testing all oxygen point for accuracy and HFNC, high flow nisocanula. A machine for uh, well functioning and new HDU for COVID 19 patient. And next slide, please. Uh, this is also checking patient monitor by using simulator of this computer. We participate with local engineer. And next slide, please. For safety. Testing and instruction uses all EDCO2 and patient monitor before operation and neuro OT. All together with local engineer and medical staff. Next slide, please. And this slide show and this photo show calibration and testing of battery and anesthesia machine and main and emergency OT. All of the battery requires two things. Next slide, please. And this photo show uh, provide oxygen cylinder and liquid oxygen filling process. And then we create daily and weekly report for uses of oxygen for the patient. And next slide, please. After installation, we arrange manual oxygen pipeline connection, checking and testing of new line and point for or uh, before use of patient. Next slide, please. Next slide is number four: maintaining and repairing. For preventing maintenance, we get, uh, we provide calibration and performance verification. And keeping the record certification of medical equipment from distributor and supplier, and then we update the medical equipment checklist. Next slide, please. As a corrective maintenance or repairing, we attending and checking all survey requests from the respective department, and then handling and decision making for repairing all medical device and equipment. We collect data also complete your register and work report. And next slide, please. This picture show testing all ERCU electro electrosurgical unit before operation and aerosol being done by using manual using manual book. 
and a hero or two. Next slide, please. And this team photo is your second interesting as we are doing an IVB and patient monitor. And this photo, PBCAS time a nutrition PBCAS only. Other uh, message function are normal. Next slide, please. Prepare by our set. The sick complaint is no function here, alarm or car. After checking it, operation shall be. User didn't understand the procedure, so I will explain to user. And the, uh, the default machine is no way no function. Next slide, please. Preparing our set. This photo show uh, painting of ECG uh, and she complain is no functioning and noise appear. Preparo side different and expire expire of the preparo. So I change the I change the preparo and uh, setting and then cleansing shampoo and lemon. After that, uh, the ECG machine is then away functioning. Next slide, please. This photo show preparing all stylizer, low session machine, and tiny black in our medical engineering department. And next slide, please. As a quarter maintenance and repairing, we repair and changing all floating bar and header coin and auto play. Next slide, please. And this photo show repairing all display cover and auto play. The medical staff. Pushing the alarm button, so glass cover crack. After that, we change the cover new one, new one. And next slide, please. This is step five: management and procurement. We provide pre budget evaluation and negotiation and procurement. Is the next we have a CJ and meeting and contrast. And we inquire and requesting quotation and voice from the distributor and requesting budgets for budget things we have. And next slide, please. And this photo show repairing and replace all we have from right all such a machine to dummy one. So we say cost and one machine. Next slide, please. We also provide medical equipment disposable process. And next slide, please. Number C, knowledge sharing. We Provide and planning and involve in continuous medical, edu medical education program monthly at the hospital. And we conduct training program to training and hospital staff and user. And next slide, please. And this picture show conduct training to the first medical engineering student by local engineer and University of Medical Technology Medical Engineering Department. Next slide, please. This picture show the explanation by senior medical engineer to training at UMT1. And next slide, please. This activity photo show practical session for the bar medical engineering student supervised by teacher and teaching assistant. And next slide, please. This photo show operating and training for table top auto play to new user by local engineer. And next slide, please. This photo show 
we make treble back three four seven five four seven four five we need more special two and next like this summary as a summary uh, we provide medical equipment management and maintenance throughout from start and solution to write off disposal and then the framework of medical equipment management system where we and the disciplinary thing were between medical engineers and other healthcare provider and then added to perform the potential risk and improve medical equipment maintenance in our hospital environment Next slide, please. As a conclusion, we, medical engineers, try to get advanced education and knowledge. And then, continue to be a medical engineer and professional. My presentation is finished. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Pupu Singh. You handled a wide range of equipment from disposable equipment, such as medical gas, to equipment used for patients. And you learned and implemented everything you need for appropriate use, maintenance, and medical device management. It is wonderful. I again would like to thank the three speakers who gave us an astound presentation. I hope that you, you continue to collaborate with both countries to improve our engineer skills and it will finally link to the patient safety. Moreover, I hope this gives us further opportunity to collaborate with other countries for variable learning experience. Before we close, let me inform you about this year's GCE hours. We are planning to do a call in June, so please be ready and apply on time. Okay. Thank you very much and have a nice morning, afternoon and evening. Bye. Thank you, Keiko Fukuta for a very interesting webinar. Again, we apologize for some of the sound problem that we have in the beginning of the webinar hopefully the rest of it was clear and well sounded i just want to uh, uh, remind you some of the points that were made from uh, toshikazo harada uh, about him being personally traveling over 4700 kilometer nine times in order to support initiate and sustain this project, a project between Japan and Myanmar that is physically and culturally highly separated, but yet this project about capacity building and creating professional career in medical engineering, as Fufu Thin was saying in their hospital, is an amazing achievement. If uh, Kaliroy can uh, show us the Collaborative Capacity Building Award categories, uh, then I would just like sh very shortly before we conclude the, the webinar to um, uh, go to the award category, please. The GCA Collaborative Capacity Building Award. Yes, thank you. Just want to highlight for you that there are three specific categories in the criteria, professional capacity building, collaboration, and contribution. This project that 
has lasted from early 2018 to today is showing that over a long period of time, the analysis of what needs are, the communication to build up relationship, building the trust between the group, the transfer of knowledge, the collaboration and the teaching as Mr. Harada was talking about doing both a class training and hospital practicum all resulted in essential impact of having careers for medical engineers in Myanmar and reducing risk to patient being treated in their hospitals. This is tremendous project worthy of the award. And this criteria may have been able to be met by others. So think about applying for this on our website. At this point, if we can get the uh, conclusion polling questions up on the screen, we'll ask you just for a few more seconds before we let you go. And here it is. Have you ever recommended a colleague for an award in clinical engineering? Yes, I've done it several times. Yes, but in other categories, not in clinical engineering. No, did not do it yet. And I would love to, but I don't know where to submit. Hopefully now we know. The second question, do you think that giving an award is actually making a difference? Is it worth the effort of spending time to nominate and review candidate? Yes, not sure, and no. Please take five more seconds to respond. Then we'll show you the results. Four, three, two, one. Kaliroi Stavriano, please show us the results. To the question about have you recommended somebody to an award? I don't know where to submit, almost half of you said. And no, I did not, almost 40% said that. That is important to know because now we show you we're on the Global Clinical Engineering Alliance site. You can find nominations are online, easy to submit. The form is straightforward. If you don't know, send an email to Keiko Fakuta and she will guide you. Do you think that giving an award is making a difference? Great to see that almost three quarter of you said yes. Nobody said no and some said not sure. So hopefully we convince you that it's worthwhile. And here in the audience, we have one fellow, Tom Judd, that just received an award for lifetime achievement from ACCE. And I know that he appreciates and he knows that it will make a difference and an impact. Thank you all for sustaining the difficulties we ran through in the beginning of this webinar. It will be put up on the Global Clinical Engineering Alliance webinar where you can see it, hear it, and submit questions for respondents. Have a great rest of the day or early morning, depends where you are. And looking forward to see you next month on another exciting Global Clinical Engineering Alliance webinar. Thank you all. Bye-bye.